and the representative of the presiding bishop of the Episcopal Church in USA. Archbishop elect Livingstone Mpala Nkoyoyo. Amen.
The Epistle by Bishop Peter Lamongin of Karamoja Diocese. Jesus Christ as the one and only foundation, and no other foundation can be laid. Some will use gold or silver or precious stones in a building on the foundation. Others will use good wood or grass or straw, and the quality of each person's work will be seen when the day of Christ exposes it. For on that day, fire will reveal everyone's work. The fire will test it and show it is real uh, quality. If what was built on the foundation subsists the fire, then the builder will receive a reward. But if anyone's work is burnt up, then we will lose it. But he himself will be saved, as if he had escaped through the fire. Surely, you will know that you are God's temple, and that God's spirit lives in you. So if anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy him. For God's temple is holy, and you yourselves are his temple. Here ends the epistle. The sermon by the Right Reverend Bishop Barry Rogerson of Bristol Diocese, who represented the Archbishop of Canterbury, George Carey. But first, the message of the Archbishop of Canterbury to His Grace Livingstone in Paranin, Under the leadership of your distinguished predecessor, Dr. Gona Ockham, 
the Church of the Province of Uganda developed and grew in a wonderful way. I am sure that as you pick up the responsibility, that development will continue and you will bring your particular gifts and experience to bear in a new and exciting way. That is not to say that you will not face problems. I know of no Archbishop, nor indeed of any leader, who does not have to face difficulty and tensions from time to time. I doubt that the Archbishop of Uganda is an exception. But at those times, you will find yourself surrounded by great wisdom, both within your own church and in neighboring provinces. I look forward to that. But now, at this solemn moment of your enthronement, I pray that God will richly bless you in your ministry and the whole Church of the Province of Uganda as it greets you, its new Archbishop. Yours warmly in Christ, George Cantua. And that ends the Archbishop's letter. In his sermon, the representative of the Archbishop of Canterbury, Bishop Barry Rogerson, advised the newly enthroned bishop and the church leadership in Uganda to seek for unity among Ugandans. God gives us to each other and we need each other. Our text said, for no one can lay any foundation other than the one that has been laid, and that foundation is Jesus Christ. The foundation that Jesus laid was that everyone was welcome. The people whom nobody else would speak to, the lepers, the woman who was ill with a continuous flow of blood, the foreigner who pleaded for her daughter, the widow whose only son had died, and the hated tax collector Zacchaeus, as well as the wastrel son who used up his father's inheritance. You know the stories as well as I, and you will know to whom they apply in your parish, your diocese, and this country of Uganda. We are to be one people with all our differences. <laughs> But this sermon is also to my brother Livingston as well. Paul said, each builder must choose with care how to build. At the beginning of this month, I was with another archbishop. He is called Ibrahim. 
from the Syrian Orthodox Church. He carries a pastoral staff like every bishop. But not a shepherd's crook. But a staff with a two headed snake surmounted by a cross. I, I don't like snakes. I am frightened of snakes. So I asked, why does the bishop's staff have snakes? There are two meanings. The first, see, I am sending you out like sheep into the midst of wolves, so be wise as serpents. Bishops need to be wise if they are to be good leaders. Wisdom is a gift of the Holy Spirit, and through it we are given the mind of Christ. May God's holy name be praised. Amen. ceremony, the Dean of the Province of the Church of Uganda, Bishop Eustace Ruhindi, takes the hand of Bishop Livingstone in Palanin Koyoyo in golden robes and presents him to the cheering congregation. He now presents to you our beloved brother Livingstone, Bishop of Mukono Diocese, whom in accordance with the constitution of the Church of Uganda, we have duly elected Archbishop. The certificate of election and administration of oath to the Archbishop read by the Chancellor of the province, Mr. Zadok Ekirapa. Certificate of election. This is to certify that on receipt of information from the Dean of the province, of the Church of Uganda that a vacancy had been created by the retirement of His Grace, the Most Reverend Dr. Yona Okok, the Archbishop of the Province of the Church of Uganda, all the diocesan Lord Bishops duly and lawfully convened in St. Paul's Cathedral, Namirembe, on the 6th of December, the year of our Lord, 1994, under the chairmanship of the Provincial Chancellor and the Deputy Provincial Chancellor, and did, with over two-thirds majority, elect the Right Reverend Livingstone Palani Nkoyoyo, the then Diocesan Bishop of Mukono Diocese, to be the Archbishop of the Province of the Church of Uganda, and the Bishop of the Diocese. And the Bishop of the Diocese of Kampala. Where, 
Wherefore, it is the wish of all the Lord Bishops, clergy, and laity of the province of the Church of Uganda that the said Right Reverend Livingstone Mpalanyi Nkoyoyo be enthroned as the Archbishop of the province of the Church of Uganda. This 29th day of January, the year of our Lord, 1995, according to the form and with the rights, honor, dignities, and the ceremonies used in the Church of Uganda. I, Livingston Palanin Koyoyo, elected to be the Archbishop of the province of Church of Uganda, do I swear reality to the heritage of the faith official by the province of the Church of Uganda as part of one united Anglican Church and as revealed in the Holy Scripture and said the article of religion. I accordingly declare myself in such a faith as a full said in public prayer and administration of the sacraments. I will use only the form of the service which are authorized and approved by the province of Church of Uganda and Anglican Communion. I promise that. I will conserve the approved customs of the Church of Uganda and the Anglican Communion and will to be the best of my ability to help and assist, defend the rights, laws and liberties of the said church. I sincerely promise that I respect, maintain and defend the faith, privileges, liberties and constitution of the province of Church of Uganda and that is of Kampala. I will serve there with truth, love, justice, charity. I will show myself in all things as an example of the flock of Christ. So help me God. The new prelate was then handed the Promato Cross, which was retrieved from the outgoing Archbishop, Dr. Yona Okoth. Archbishop is led to his throne by the Dean of Namirembe Cathedral, Reverend Daudi Servide, and the newly enthroned Archbishop of the Church of Uganda, the Most Reverend Livingstone Impalanyin Koyoyo. 
pledges to foster unity within the Church of Uganda and support the goals of the Uganda Joint Christian Council. Prime Ministers, Honorable Ministers, Your Excellencies, the Ambassadors, Your Lordship, the representative of the Archbishop of Canterbury, the Right Reverend Barry Rogerson, and your wife, Your Eminence, Emmanuel Kaijuno Wamala, Your Grace, the Archbishops, Sava Sajja, Mwena Mtebi Wokubili, Kawaka Wabuganda. Mkiraba Shaija, Abutamba, Surumoni, Guru, Mukama Wabunyoro. Mkiraba Shaija, Olimi Kaboyo, Mukama Wabunyoro. The cultural leaders, my brother bishops, the Mufti of Uganda, Mukadewangi, Dr. Samson Tseka Nomchai, all partners of Church of Uganda from abroad. Honorable members of NRC, CA delegates, the clergy, members of the province assembly, brothers and sisters, and all people of God here present, ladies and gentlemen. In our It is my great pleasure to welcome you all on my enthronement as sixth Archbishop of the Church of Uganda. My wife Ruth joins me in this welcome. My theme in my leadership will be based on the words of Jesus saying, Farewell to his disciples, he said, Be my witness in many places. We must remember and not with thanks that support from our partners in mission of modern times who have been with us in evangelism, education, medical and primary health care. A number of these are represented here. The same way, Episcopal Church, we will continue to need them actually as technical advisors. At this point, let me welcome in a special way the representative of Archbishop of Canterbury, the Right Reverend Bishop Barry Rogerson, who has come to, to perform this ceremony of enthronement. Mm -hmm. You are welcome. <laughs> United, we stand. Divide, we fall. Unity in structure, unity in proclamation, and unity among denominations, so that we can resist Satan and its evil ways. Here, we need our cooperation already seen in the work of Uganda Joint Christian Council. We will support this goal in every way possible in order to give impact to our witness, yeah. evangelism, our spiritual health, renewed and strengthened, is found in our approach to mission. Therefore, I call upon all dioceses and churches to use evangelistic groups available to us, such as African Evangelistic Enterprise, Life Ministry, Boys Brigade, Secretary Union, and to use modern media to strengthen evangelism. Mm. Groups in the church. These are the arms with which we minister. They include Sunday School, Youth Fellowship, Women's Work, Church Choirs, 
Bishop of Namirembe, I only want to take this opportunity, brief as he is, uh, to, to welcome you all on this grand, colorful, joyful, and memorable occasion, which is immensely significant to us in Namirembe Diocese. I'm here to welcome you all in St. Paul's Cathedral and to extend to you all the comforts of our lovely diocese. As a diocese, we have risen to be grateful to the Lord. For as from today, Livingstone is the Archbishop of the Church of the Province of Uganda. We would like to assure him your, your grace of our earnest prayers, fellowship, and solidarity. We are thankful to God who chose Livingstone to be our Archbishop. Livingstone replaces the most reverend Dr. Yono Koth, whom we believe has done a tremendous work in the shepherding the bigger flock in the whole church of Uganda. We want to thank God, who has enabled him to reach this time when he is still alive and well. We welcome all our visitors, including the bishop representing the Archbishop of the Episcopal Church of America. Um, he's around and he's seated behind us here. 
you are most welcome. Um, Naimelembe Diocese joins the Christians in the whole province to welcome you, Livingstone, as our Archbishop. We pledge our cooperation, support, and participation together with you in all efforts meant for developing the physical and the spiritual welfare of all God's people in Uganda, and especially in Naimelembe Diocese. The challenges ahead of us are quite enormous, but we sincerely believe that since unity is strength, together we shall make it. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. During the enthronement service of Archbishop Livingstone in Palanyukoyoyo, some of the invited guests were also given a chance to greet the congregation. This included the presiding bishop of the Episcopal Church in the United States of America and the bishop from the Anglican Church of Canada. And later, Savasa Jakobakawa of Uganda, Ronald Mwenda Mutebi, also delivered his greetings and congratulatory speech to the newly elected Archbishop Mpalanyi Koyoyo and the entire congregation. I did not dream that this day would arrive when I would be standing in your presence. In 1964, I traveled to Uganda with a group of students to learn about this beautiful land. I have dreamt of this beautiful country and had the wonderful opportunity now of representing the presiding bishop of the Episcopal Church, the most reverend Edward Lee Browning. He sends you his greetings his felicitations, his prayers, now that I'm all. He sends his support. As I said at the beginning, it was a joy and a surprise for me to be able to return here, uh, lo these many years, and I hope that as we begin our friendship, that we will continue to work together in the Lord's vineyard. One of the things I have discovered serving as a bishop in the Church of God is that the world is very small indeed, and what happens here touches my heart, and what happens in my diocese has an effect here. And we're all part of that global village, and I look forward with excitement and great joy, as does the presiding bishop of the new chapter that we will begin in your episcopal here as Archbishop. May God bless you. Your grace and honored guests, it is my privilege to bring greetings to to this church, to this province, and to your Archbishop from the Anglican Church of Canada on behalf of Archbishop Michael Pears, the bishops and clergy and people of the province of Canada. Over the years, the Anglican Church of Canada has looked with great affection and deep love and concern for the life and work of the people of the church of this province. Many of us watched with great respect the way in which your bishops presented themselves at a most difficult time in your history in the Lambeth Conference of Bishops. We followed your journeys and your troubles with our prayers and we now follow your joys and your growth and the excitement of this province with joy with you. We long to see something of the growth in our church that we see in yours. We wonder when perhaps you will be sending missionaries from Uganda to the Anglican Church of Canada. Mm. <laughs> and so on behalf of Archbishop Pierce, who look forward to welcoming and meeting you at the meeting of primates next month, I bring you his personal word of greetings and the respect and courtesy the Anglican Church of Canada. Thank you. At Winchester, we are constantly needing to look after our ancient building, and we appreciate the challenges you face and the work to be done on St. Paul's Cathedral. We continue to think of you and everyone in the cathedral community in our prayers each Friday. It's a privilege to do this, and we look forward to continuing it into the future with prayerful good wishes, and especially to the Archbishop at the time of his enthronement. With this, I bring the greetings of 
Bishop Colin of Winchester, and the whole diocese to you, Archbishop, on this day of enthronement. Prime Minister, I Just to Inavana and Funzi, Bandi, Baiting, Avanto of the Bab. The Vivian Na will know who started our gaze if and not be known who started our gaze. Nayera Avantubo, Musawa Vizua, Uganda, Vasa Sanye, Bagains and Musawa Sevo, Sava Labis, Wakunga and Ye, Wasame. Archbishop of the Church of Uganda, I'm very happy that today we are standing here in a house of God. All Ugandans from different corners, different tribes, different ages, and different sexes, because I'm the first woman to stand here to speak today. <laughs> I would like to start first by congratulating you for having won an election. Being a politician, I know it is not very easy to win an election, but we all know that all leadership only becomes bestowed on anyone by the hand of God. So, I want to thank God for having you with the duty of being the big shepherd of the Church of Uganda at this moment. I want to also congratulate your predecessor, my Lord Bishop Yona Okor, for having steered the church through difficult times. I thank also the Church of Uganda on behalf of government for having supported government. This I'm saying because you don't only give government moral support, but you also give it physical support in line with the church that was read this morning by the new Archbishop of the Church of Uganda. 
we shall continue to collaborate, to plan together with the church and other religious institutions so that all the fears of the people, both physical and moral, are handled by people who are anointed by God to do so, both in secular leadership and in spiritual leadership. I want to say that as a leader who cares for people's bodies, the physical part of it, and those of you, the bishops and other leaders in the church who are sitting in the congregation, without us getting married, none of us will go to God. None of us will go to heaven. Because separating spiritual leadership and body leadership separates God from man. And yet we know that man is made in the image of God so that God can reside in man on earth. We must keep the two together if we are to get God-fearing people, people who love others. I know that uh, the Archbishop will tell me, Madam, I'm not a politician, how am I going to do that? We also know in this country that prayer has done a lot to make sure that we get the peace that we are enjoying now. That is one step. The other step is for the church, through example, giving us leadership or leaders who are moral, who are not corrupt, who indeed lead and serve because they love every Ugandan, be they a poor Ugandan, a rich Ugandan, educated, uneducated, be they bishops or sinners. So this kind of partnership is going to help us to forge a better Uganda, which fears and loves God. The way tribes, the way organizations in society, be they parties or professional organizations, women youth clubs can help us to indeed have a Muganda there. Let us have a Catholic there. Let's have a Muslim there by making sure that you build leadership in the training of people in these institutions. So that you just don't put a Muganda because she's a Muganda. You just don't put a Catholic because she's a Catholic. You put that person there or you recommend them because you know that they are capable since you have seen them grow in leadership from a very early stage. This is indeed going to help us know that irrespective of whether you have a godmother or a godfather, like myself, I didn't have any godmother or godfather. Only God was my mother and my father. And then the godfather who helped to nurture those leaders who are good are the ones whom we should look at help bring them up. Your grace. And I'm happy to know that you have said you want to revolutionize the spirit of the African church in the church of Uganda, in the province of Uganda. You want music which makes us vibrate African women so that we can thank the Lord. I can assure you being a minister of culture and youth, you will get more youth in this nation if you just take that angle away. Allow the youth to express themselves. Let them come and play the guitar and praise the Lord. Without God, man wouldn't have invented the guitar. Without God, he wouldn't have invented the flute. Without God, he wouldn't have made the African learn the rhythm of that throat that makes us tick even in times of trouble. I would also want to say that while there is freedom of worship, Freedom is going to responsibility. So the number of churches that are springing up, disturbing the peace of Ugandans who want to rest so that they can be more productive. Why do you have the freedom to worship? You have the responsibility 
to also know that some other Christian or Muslim has their right to also do what they want to do. So really, as responsible Ugandans, let us ask God to show us the path which will help us to worship while loving the person we see who is sleeping. Thank you very much for coming to witness God's glory and I wish all Ugandans a happy new year and I wish them to always remember that without God nothing is possible. Thank you very much. Front Archbishop of the Province of the Church of Uganda, Livingstone Palanyinkoyo, he was born on 4th of October 1939. His father was the late Erisa Wamala, at one time a Sasa chief in Uganda Kingdom. His mother is now managing to still living. Regarding his education, Archbishop Palanyinkoyo took his studies at the then Rubiri Primary School or Nabagreka Primary School and thereafter Chiriri Primary School, Gomba County in Uganda. He later extended his education when he joined Mitiana Secondary School. After his secondary education, Archbishop Livingstone in Palanyinkoyo joined the Uganda company where he got unemployment as a mechanic for two years. From there, he worked at Haji Pusungu's garage at Wandegea. He later worked with his uncle, the late Bishop Rutai of Kako, as a driver. And uh, on the retirement of his uncle, he continued to work as a driver and at the same time as a mechanic at Kako Masaka. At Kako, that was where Livingstone in Palanyinkoyo decided to get saved when he responded to Jesus' call. As he had had acquired a wide experience in motor vehicle mechanics, especially in wheel alignment, Livingstone's first observation when he answered Jesus' call was to align people's behaviors and morals spiritually. As he was a well-balanced specialist in his profession, people, especially Christians, could not believe in Koyo's spiritual decisions that as he was at that time, that he could turn to the Lord. But his belief grew stronger and stronger at that early age, and he desired to help the people of God with well-balancing masabo, that is traditional cultural worshiping, poverty and sickness extra extra as he grew strong and stronger spiritually Livingstone began to preach the gospel to the youth and at this time he was no longer a driver in 1961 he got his first and second lay reader certificates at Bishop Rutaya Theological College later he served one year at Nachibunga Church of Uganda Mitiana in 1963, he got his third lay reader's certificate. In 1964, Livingstone in Palanyinkoyoyo was called to serve at the Chuuririza Church of Uganda. Because the house he had been given to live in was in a poor state, he instead decided to rent a small house while he was putting up a better living house for the pastor. On May 1st, 1965, Livingstone in Palanyinkoyo got married to Ruth Nareso, daughter of the late Yorani Mkiri, 
and Eunike Namubiru also died now resting at Kabira Bulemezi. In 1967, he went to Warasi in Mbale Theological College for a certificate in theology. In 1968, he went to Mukono Theological College for a certificate in theology, which he read for one year where he qualified as a deacon. In 1969, Deacon Livingstone in Palanyukoyoyo was assigned to serve the people of God at Kasubi Church of Uganda, where he served until 1975. While at Kasubi, Deacon Livingstone in Palanyukoyoyo refused to stay in the pastor's house because it was in a poor state. He instead first rented a house nearby while he was putting up a modern good living house for the servers of God. In 1976, Reverend Livingstone in Palanyinkoyoyo was transferred to Nsanji Parish to look after the flocks of God. And while there, he repaired and expanded the pastor's house. He removed the already breaking tiled roof and replaced it with an iron roofed one. I also replaced the wooden framed windows and replaced with them with the glass framed ones and also added on it a garage where a pastor can keep his vehicle. And while at Insanji, he served for one year and later was called upon to spread the word of God to the Christians of Namirembe. In 1977, Reverend Canon in Palanyinkoye worked tirelessly when the province of the Church of Uganda celebrated their 100 years since the coming of the missionaries in Uganda. In Namirembe Diocese was the Centenary Celebrations Coordinator. In 1978, leaving Eastern in Palanyinkoyo, traveled to Ghana where he took a course in Christian Education and Social Worker in Ghana Lagos Trinity College. After one year, he had an opportunity to have a study tour in England. Well, in England, same year, Reverend Canon Livingstone in Palanyinkoyoyo was appointed suffragan bishop of the then created Diocese of Mukono. On November 1980, Reverend Canon Livingstone in Palanyinkoyoyo was consecrated as an assistant bishop of Namirem Mukono Diocese, having its seat at St. Andrea's Cathedral Church of Uganda, Mukono. In 1981, Bishop Livingstone in Palanyinkoyo was official in 1982 he traveled to United Kingdom, Eastbourne, where he took a course in social work and developmental studies. In 1983, he traveled to the United States of America, where he visited New York Episcopal Church As a home of entertainment. Okay.
All entertainment during the weekdays like lunchtime cruise. What are you? appearance to the society catch up with your latest fashion tips personalities and more in the fashion climax show the fashion climax here for style Yourself. Yeah, greetings massive. Everything I re I man is lying with the more represent. We're nice and smart. Go down, take it, man, go down. Afro Jam represents Africa's finest reggae vibes TV show. One thing called the Jam Rock Vibration. Lock up for the top of them roots reggae music. Love us rock. So reggae entertainment only on UBC TV compiler. You know me saw the topers from antics, dog billboard topper shots, war premieres, artist profiles, and ah with the one African topers reggae vibes dub selector. The one Gaza Emissary woman gushing DJ. 